10 old games that still look amazing in 2024. Number one game on my list is Uncharted 4. Now, this is just insane. The game is already eight years old. Just wow, look at the graphics. If you ask me, it doesn't feel older than 2018. Someone could never guess the game was released back in 2016. The Pirate and Libertalia mansions were very beautiful. Uncharted 4 was amazing, and I'm a little bummed that I didn't play through the original trilogy beforehand. Uncharted 4 was probably the first time I've ever actually felt emotional after finishing a video game. You can really tell the developers were incredibly invested in the game, and that feels like a rarity these days. Truly a masterpiece, it completely exceeded any expectations that I had going in. Graphically and mechanically, it's the best game in the series. Naughty Dog went all in for this game. The story is rather good, and the acting is incredible. It represents the peak of the series and Naughty Dog going all out. Graphics, gameplay, story, action, puzzles, characters, animation. Everything is superb, and you'll love it from start to finish. Oh, this was really a great idea. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Believe it or not, Rise of the Tomb Raider came out in 2015. This game is almost a decade old now, but man, it doesn't look dated at all. I still remember the small flakes of snow that would appear on Leara's hair. Something to be said about the hair physics, actually, like when she'd also squeeze the water out of her ponytail. In fact, whenever I've had the opportunity, I've always given who I'm playing as longer hair after playing the reboot trilogy. It made me appreciate hair physics in games. I swear, this is one of the best looking games out there even by today's standard. And even more surprising is that the game is not even optimized for current gen, and this still holds true for Rise. Art direction, graphics, lighting, the look is just incredible and demands your attention and admiration. Also, Lara looks significantly better in every way. The body morphs in Shadow are just worse, objectively worse. And her face kinda looks rounder, which doesn't make any sense since she's older and still skinny. Her muscle definition was a nice touch, though. There's not a lot to dislike about the whole trilogy, honestly. I know it's popular already, but I'm sad for it that it's not more, because it's genuinely great. Amazing performance and graphics, the story is really good, Lara is a really strong protagonist, there's a lot of emotional weight to it, the combat is pretty fun, the puzzles are good. I wasn't a huge fan of the villains, I guess, and even then, they're still not bad. But there's so much that's so good about them that it's hard to understand why it isn't a pinnacle franchise. They all build on each other as well. So if you're looking for something to sink your teeth into and invest in, then it's always a great choice. Beyond Two Souls Beyond Two Souls is an action-adventure game focused on the story, with not much gameplay. I would compare it to the telltale Walking Dead. It was released in 2013 for PlayStation 3. And honestly, it looked amazing for a PS3. In my opinion, one of the best-looking games of that generation. Voice acting was also top-notch, and animations were also really good for the most part. And I really liked the game. The difference in some review scores I find to be a main factor of what the reviewers were expecting and hoping for going into the game. I went in expecting gameplay to not be the main focus of the game, rather that the story would be, and the game has not let me down. It's given me just what I expected and more, and because of this I'm able to appreciate the game for what it really is, and I feel this is the viewpoint that most of the reviewers have had, as the game has received mostly positive reviews. Now just on that point, the vast majority of reviews have been highly positive of the game. Only a few have actually been negative. So really the hate being given to the game is highly exaggerated. I feel that the negative reviews have been mostly attributed to the outlook going into the game, and in some cases, a hatred of David Cage. So really it's a game that can go either way, depending on what you're expecting and what you're looking for in a game. The story is excellent, and some scenes throughout are really stellar. The opportunity to live through the life of the main character and experience what she's had to go through really got me personally involved in the story and the characters, and I can't get enough of the game. I need to find a quiet place. Quantum Break. Quantum Break is another gem of a game that looks incredible despite being released in 2016. It's one of the most underrated ones on this list too. With amazing graphics that seriously look better than many games today, even though it's about nine years old now, the time-breaking scenes alone are breathtaking. I'm very surprised that the game didn't make more of a splash when it came out than it did. Remedy is an amazing developer as usual, 
but this game had some amazing things going for it. An actually coherent and interesting time travel story, tragic characters, twists, and overall kept me way more hooked than I thought. The gameplay is simple yet a lot of fun and really satisfying. It really makes you feel like you're in a movie. The TV show is surprisingly well done and well acted, much better than most TV today. Although, I'm not sure I like the show being pushed in between levels. But some complaints I have are, the lack of enemy variety and the overall pacing of the game, too many cutscenes for a game with whole TV show breaks. They should have tried to go the more uncharted route and let you play during the carnage as the world is blowing up around you. Also, the enemy variety was kinda meh. Could have used one or two more specials or something to spice it up. Overall, a really solid game that I wish more people got to experience. Not perfect, but so much more polished and filled with passion than 80% of the games as service crap that we get nowadays. Plus, it tried something really unique by melding the TV show with games. Wasn't a perfect fit, but I give him credit for trying. Check the game out if you haven't yet. Ready. We've passed every test, every inspection. We're about to make history, Jack. The Order 1886. The Order 1886 is a decade-old game that still looks better than most games. Released back in 2015 on the PS4. Played this back when it came out and now again on PS5, but seriously, how does this game still look so good? Everyone at Ready at Dawn should be commended. I don't think another game since has matched the look of this. The film grain, depth of field, lens scratches, soft focus. This game has a cinematic, filmic look that has never been duplicated and looks simply amazing. Although the game went through undue negative press before launch, largely due to claims of the game being only five hours. This is not really the case for a standard playthrough and more representative of an early speed run. It's a shame this happened as it was partly to blame for low initial sales, most likely eliminating the chance for a sequel. The Order 1886 is not a bad game, especially in its current heavily discounted state. It is a highly cinematic third-person adventure set in a unique alternative history mixing Arthurian legend and steampunk. The gameplay is rather streamlined, and the game itself is very linear with no multiplayer. While this may turn some off, as it doesn't hold much replay value, it is evident that all resources were put into laying the groundwork for a fleshed-out universe and a superb level of fidelity so early in the PS4's life cycle. The core gameplay loop is made up of third-person combat, light exploration, and quick time mechanics, as well as minigame mechanics such as lockpicking and the like. If you're looking for intensely deep gameplay, a super long campaign, or a highly interactive world, you may come away a bit disappointed. However, those looking for a cinematic action experience with top-of-the-line graphics, excellent world-building, characters, and story will find much to like. It is truly a shame how much negative press this game received as not only did it hurt the game's sales, but has deprived us all of what would almost certainly have been an expanded and much improved sequel. With much of the groundwork done, another, The Order, would have been able to focus on every element criticized in the first game easily. Those of us who enjoyed The Order can only imagine what would have been, had there not been an overblown pre-launch controversy, spreading like wildfire. I highly recommend anyone to at least give this game a fair shake and explore a universe we may likely never visit again. Rise Son of Rome Rise Son of Rome looks visually stunning for a game from 2013. This game is 11 years old and looks absolutely incredible for its time. It's still a beautiful looking game, and I played it on a decent PC. It plays fairly smooth. The gameplay was fun, if a little old-fashioned compared to more recent games, but not unfun very much of its time, 2013, with lots of QTEs but not ones detrimental to the gameplay, except in the last scene, thankfully. The execution animations were enjoyable and varied. After I remembered how to do them, they could be changed depending on what skill I had selected. Being built on the CryEngine, it was likely going to look pretty good, but I could just imagine what they could do with more modern engines these days. Not many games are set in ancient times, and as a history fan, that's a shame in my opinion. Talking about the history, the story did make me cringe a little, but it's okay if you know nothing about the actual times other than a few names, you just have to roll with it. But as far as world building and character motivation, urgency, it was actually okay. And as I am a full-time content creator with not much time to spare, I always appreciate a shorter game under 10 hours, which is decent, good world building, and as an added bonus, it looks pretty too, and disgusting or horrific in places. But I would still recommend it.
Crisis. Am. Can't believe this game is almost 12 years old, releasing in early 2013 on the PS3. But it looks amazing. I love the atmosphere of this game and the mechanics of the suit. I never played any of the Crisis games until last year when I bought the Xbox Game Pass. I then proceeded to play and completed both Part 1 and 2. Now, when I played Crisis 3, I really enjoyed it. However, it's a little linear and the levels are nothing special as far as enemies, etc. But it's still a fun shooter which really makes you slow down and use the suit and its mechanics. It's also really fun to choose which weapon to use in your tactics. And I love the bow edition. Also, the stats mechanic is better in this game, in my opinion. I'll just say I enjoyed the game for what it is, though the campaign is only like 6 hours. It's a real shame they didn't put more love into making this a bigger adventure, because what they did create is fantastic. But for me personally, I beat the game at around 9 hours, so it wasn't as bad as a 6 hour campaign. The last boss took me a few tries, and I did sneak my way through a couple of levels instead of fighting every enemy, so overall I'd say it was a reasonable length in line with the first two games in the series. If that spots you, you're Until Dawn. Releasing in 2015, nine years ago, the game was a story masterpiece, but it was damn gorgeous too. From pure graphical models to textures, lighting, camera angles, the overall production quality of this game is incredible. And the details, the tag on a shirt, the elastic adjuster on yoga pants, the fuzzy yarn pouring out of a winter hat, or a loose thread hanging from a jacket. This truly felt like a next-gen experience to me on the PS4. I wish I could erase my memory of Until Dawn and play it all over again. The story is really solid. I truly cared for each of the characters and felt bad whenever I made a choice that harmed any of them. The branching paths that result from your choices are what sell this game. You can have so many different outcomes and can easily last for a plethora of playthroughs. I think I did five of them just to see how the choices affected the story. Voice acting is top-notch. The cast all play their characters phenomenally well and help them feel unique. Sound design is great, no complaints in that area. It's not terrifyingly scary, but it does have its moments that'll make you jump in your seat a little. Collectibles are pretty cool. They can help you understand and prepare for future events in the game. Definitely a must-play for horror fans or people looking to get into horror games. Side note, this is also an extremely easy game to platinum if you're interested in doing that. It only took me a couple of days to get it. Metro Exodus. Now, not the oldest game on this list, but still, it is getting close to six years, releasing in 2019. But holy cow, the game is so freaking detailed and looks photorealistic. To be 100% honest, I didn't like Metro Exodus when I first tried it. It took me restarting the game at least five times to stick with it to the end. I think one reason for this was because I had literally just finished Metro Last Light. Going from a more level-based shooter to such a dense open world so soon was very jarring. So I put Metro Exodus down for a few months. But when I did finally finish the game, Metro Exodus became my favorite of the trilogy. I think the devs did a fantastic job translating the gunplay of the original titles to a more open-world framework. The Metro game's signature, I think, is how weighty and tense combat feels in claustrophobic environments. Metro Exodus seemingly abandoned much of the claustrophobia by going open-world, except not really. You're still gonna find yourself in these moments where you're surrounded on all sides by monsters and having to tiptoe around to avoid being torn to shreds. And you're still having intense shootouts. I played the latest upgraded edition on PC, maxed out everything for the most part. The game is a beast, a visual showcase. My only complaint is not getting a lot of the forest environment you encounter in the second to last area. My favorite section of the game is actually the last metro section. There's something very haunting about seeing those old Russia apartment buildings covered in sheer ice and snow, wondering what could be staring down at you through those black windows, and then having to crawl through those subways and sewers. That last section was truly the signature on this love letter of a game. A 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 is getting close to 7 years old now. And damn. This is not just the game of the year. It's the game of the century for me, no doubt. This game came out in 2018, and we are now in a new console generation but I still can't think of any game that looks better than RDR2. 
been replaying it on my PC, and even though it's a last-gen game, it's still more beautiful to look at than games like Spider-Man 2 and Assassin's Creed Mirage, which have actual next-gen versions. I just hope Rockstar gives a proper enhanced version for RDR2 on PS5 like they did with GTA 5, but sadly it's like they have moved on from RDR2 for now, at least. Anyways, Red Dead 2 isn't the best-looking game ever because it gets the big things right. Red Dead 2 is the best-looking game ever because it gets the little things right. The leaves, the blades of grass, the playing cards, the hammer on your gun, the grain in the wood of the train track, that's what the next generation of consoles is all about, and Rockstar already beat them to the punch. This is what putting an insane amount of money into a game gets you. It's still the best-looking, most detailed, and immersive in so many ways it's still mind-blowing. Rockstar is one generation ahead of the competition. GTA 5 came out for PS3 yet competed against PS4 releases years after it came out. RDR 2 felt like a 9th gen game when it came out. I can't fathom what GTA 6 will look like. That's all. Subscribe if you love these games.